Assuming that the court is the court that we see now, um, how do you, th I mean, let's just straight out, yeah. health care reform, do you think they will find any part of it unconstitutional? Um, I think that as presently configured, they might find some parts of it unconstitutional, but probably not the essential core of the program. Um, but to be honest, that's against the backdrop of the relative popularity of the bill still. I mean, to the extent that public opinion changes, the swing votes in the middle are likely to be aware of that, always are aware of that. And Justice Kennedy, who is, of course, the swing vote, is the closest thing that the court has to an old-fashioned libertarian in that he likes claims of rights. So, you know, Justice Kennedy has stood up very bravely for the rights of gay people, and he stood up for the rights of detainees at Guantanamo, and he stands up equally strongly for the rights of corporations. Um, and he's really sincere. He, he was the author of Citizens United. Yeah. So, I mean, he's, he's really sincere in this view, but he's also alone. The other eight justices um, tend to, you know, four and four, more or less, um, tend to differentiate between individual liberties and corporate liberties, with some preferring corporate and some preferring individual. But Justice Kennedy is really, you know, he is someone who believes in rights full stop. And so the question is, in the case of the health care bill, can the health care bill be described as a violation of individual rights? And that is one of the central arguments that's being made by its opponents, namely that requiring people to have health care or pay a fine um, amounts to a violation of their individual right not to have health care. Um, and, you know, I'm glad nobody snickered because serious lawyers are making this argument. And although I don't think it's a winning constitutional argument, it's also not a completely crazy constitutional argument.